Fuck it. Honestly, we're getting them accredited as an academic institution right now, and we're putting them in the Mid-American Conference. Welcome to the Jungle, everyone. I'm Kyle Phelps, and we made it two weeks without the XFL being cancelled. Four more, and it'll set a record for XFL reboots. What a time to be alive, everybody. Before we get into breaking everything down, though, and uh, getting into the action of week two, I just like to ask that you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. It helps my channel grow, and it helps you know when all of my content comes out. So this week, we didn't have a ton of crazy comebacks, kind of like we did last week. Uh, maybe the XFL isn't scripted after all. What a concept. Although, I don't know, the damn refs seem to be awful interested in pushing the clear cash cow Houston Roughnecks narrative. You know, that illegal contact that waved off Brandon Silver's pick late in the fourth quarter as obvious plant. You know, if that pick had been allowed to stand, then Drew Plitt totally wouldn't have thrown another interception with the game on the line. Oh, wait, no, he did do that. Oh. But either way, that's clearly the only reason that the Roughnecks got a touchdown on that drive and won the game. Do better, XFL script writers. Okay, but in all seriousness, at one point this was a really good back and forth game with both teams overcoming double digit deficits at one point to take the lead. The Roughnecks appear to, once again, be the best team in the league, but it's not as blatantly obvious as it was two years ago, I don't think. The other team that could potentially stake that claim is the DC Defenders. That two quarterback system seems to be working out just fine. I'm not suggesting the NFL should try it though because, you know, I think that's partially just due to the level of competition. Either way, Jordan Tayamu and De'Eric King are a potent combination in the XFL and they keep getting the job done. Although, to be fair, the defenders did score the least amount of points of all the winners this weekend. But maybe that's just a credit to the Vipers defense. I mean, you know, probably not. They did give up the second most points in the league last week. That Vipers offense though? Oh, 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 they could not keep up at all. Like, honestly, they're they're already on the lowest tier of professional football, but if they weren't, I'd suggest that we just relegate them right now. You know, like, fuck it. Honestly, we're getting them accredited as an academic institution right now, and we're putting them in the Mid-American Conference. Because seriously, if it had not been for a freak fumble by Jordan Tayamu deep in DC territory that the Vipers recovered and returned to the two-yard line, Vegas might not have scored a single point this weekend. They crossed midfield twice. Twice. Once late in the third quarter where the drive ended in a missed 23-yard field goal due to awful field conditions, to be fair. The second was early in the fourth quarter when Brett Hundley fumbled at the 48. So, I mean, yeah, to say that this was the worst XFL game of the weekend, I think would be a massive understatement. That said, the biggest blowout of the weekend was when the San Antonio Brahmas put their woes from last week in the mirror and beat up on the lowly Guardians. After Paxton Lynch's terrible performance that got him benched last week, it kind of seemed as if the Guardians wanted to take the quarterback position in a new direction this week. They still gave Lynch the start, and he started quick with a touchdown on the Guardians' first drive, but the Guardians' offense was basically anemic the rest of the game. Overall, though, I think it seemed a bit better when Lynch was in the game. Not by a whole lot, because, you know, backup quarterback Francois found the end zone at one point as well, but he also produced the game's only turnover with an interception on the following drive. A lot of people have been shitting all over Paxton over his performance in the XFL so far, but quite frankly, it's this whole team, guys. Like, maybe, maybe the drops are a result of poor communication because Paxton isn't a good leader, but quite frankly, the Guardians have looked horrendous for two weeks. Maybe this is why you don't let a guy whose highest level of coaching experience is a college position coach be the head coach and general manager of a professional football team. The Guardians basically gave Terrell Buckley the Bill Belichick experience. So, I mean, yeah, you, you tell me how that's going to work out. Finally, the best game of the weekend belongs, once again, to my St. Louis Battlehawks. This was the battle of my favorite team and my son's favorite team. Okay. 
So I'm going to be honest with you, the Sea Dragons were definitely the better team early in this game as they jumped out to a 12-0 lead early in the second quarter. The Battlehawks, though, brought things back within a score before the half, but it wasn't until the fourth quarter when AJ McCarron really turned things on and the Battlehawks took their first lead of the game. They had the chance to extend the lead by even more late in the fourth, but Hagman had his second missed field goal of the game. Ben DiNucci then proceeded to take the ball and lead Seattle all the way down the field on Seattle's go-ahead score with just a minute left to play. But that boy! That, that, that boy! AJ McCarron was like, bet, and took the remainder of time off the clock as the Battle Hawks marched down the field. With five seconds left in the game, Seattle had the chance to stop the Battle Hawks for a long field goal attempt that Hagman honestly probably likely would have missed, given his track record in, in this game and just in general. But for a second week in a row, McCarron and Austin Prohl were the heroes as they connected for nine yards, took that timeout, and Hagman converted from 44 for the second clutch dub in as many weeks. Kaka! So there it is. I'm not going to do a whole XFL Power Rankings video just because I don't, I don't really know if there would be enough interest for that. But if I had to put them in an order after two weeks of football, I'd say you've got Houston as the clear number one, DC's probably number two, uh, which is really close with the number three Battle Hawks. Like, it's like neck and neck with those two. Number four, I've got the Brahmas. Number five, the Renegades. Number six, the Sea Dragons. Number seven, the Vipers. And number eight, <laughs> absolutely god-awful Guardians. Like, it's not even close. So let me know y'all's thoughts about the XFL through two weeks, and I'll feature the best ones in my next video, like this one from Mikey, Saints fan for life, who said, How about them Battle Hawks? Just so you know, if you do USFL, you know the Breakers will win the championship. Yeah, I, I would imagine you'd be a fan of the New Orleans team, Mikey. At this rate, I probably will be doing USFL content this summer, because the XFL content has done surprisingly well. But, um... Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I find it difficult to get excited about any of the teams in the USFL. Like, I mean, maybe I would, like, root for the Michigan Panthers. Like, I, I, mean, I don't know, seeing Jeff Fisher coaching again is kind of cool, I guess. And, and geographically, that's the team that would be closest to me. Um, I'm not gonna lie, though, I'm probably just going to root for whoever is playing against the Pittsburgh Maulers. Yes, I am that petty. So yeah, through two weeks, yeah, we've mostly got some pretty good spring football guys. Hopefully that trend keeps up next week, but until then, y'all can always catch more of what I do at KylePhelps92 on Twitter, Facebook.com slash ThePhelps, Fumble Sports, Battle of Ohio Podcast on the Spot Pod Network, and right here, if you subscribe. Maybe the Battle Hawks should try not giving us a heart attack next week and just be normal. Either way, I'll leave y'all, as always, with a cuckoo!